Okay, so, hey guys. Today I'm going to talk about a uh, shelter that could have been used, um, or would have been used, in the prairies, places like the Great Plains. And I'm jumping forward in time a little bit, from the 18th century to the 19th century, where there was a lot of Western movement. And you would have seen people out at the Great Plains, crossing it in, in prairie schooners, and their different wagons like that. So, I'm going to talk about places like the Great Plains that don't have any wood. It was said um, during on the Oregon Trail that when they passed through the prairies, there was no wood to burn for a fire, so they would send their children out to go collect buffalo chips, as they were called. Buffalo chips is uh, are basically um, buffalo manure that is dried from the sun and is uh, capable of being burnt. Quiet! Dog's here, sorry. Excuse him. He's kind of a hot day out, so he's breathing heavy. But, uh, so I'm going to talk about a place where there's no wood to the point where you can't burn any wood or a fire to keep warm. You can't collect wood to build a lean-to type shelter. As I showed in the woodland environment, 18th century uh, shelter construction. Now this does not have to necessarily be um, 19th century because there was some western movement in the 18th century where you would be in a, a, bit, a large prairie. But you don't see a lot of that because a lot of it was reserved to uh, the 13 colonies in the eastern woodlands. But this will cover 18th and 19th century, I guess, just because it's a shelter that could be could have been used for both all of that time period. So first, I want to talk about a simple way that they probably would have done a lot, a lot because. Sometimes they didn't plan too well for nasty weather. So let me throw this tarp aside. What they probably most often would have done is spread out their blanket on the ground. And I'm going to show you while I'm doing this how to sleep in a wool blanket. So they would have put down their blanket on the ground simply and had the four corners spread out as you would have your blanket laying. But then you see I have a corner up here and the opposite corner is down here. So right now I'm kind of making it a diamond type fashion. Um, so what I'm going to do is point my feet towards the corner down here. And I'm going to grab that corner and put my feet in that and I'm going to fold that uh, corner over my feet to keep, the, keep my feet warm. I'm going to lay down. I'm going to grab this side it has a corner in it and fold that over me and tuck that in under my body then I'm gonna take this corner take it like that and now I'm laying in my wool blanket how they would have slept you see I have, th I have this corner still up here which I can wear as a hood like this See that cover my head, or that's just a, a area for my lay, head to lay. So I would lay like this, and uh, that's most likely how they would have laid, even in bad weather. On the mount, the long hunters were said to have not carried a tarp all the time. Although it is your personal choice to carry a tarp. But oftentimes, 
most of them, the large majority of a large majority of them, just carried one single wool blanket, and that is how they would tuck themselves in, I guess you could say, and uh, they would sleep like that through the bad weather and through good weather. But I don't like having a, just a single wool blanket as my shelter because when it gets wet, it stinks. It does keep insula its insulative values. It loses just a little bit, but it keeps the rest of it. So that's great. But at the same time, I don't want to be wet and cold and freezing. So um, we're going to uh, see how I would do it if I was an 18th or 19th century woodsman who did carry a tarp. So let's see. dog. Okay, I'm going to pick my blanket aside for a second. I'm going to take my tarp out. Chop up. I'm going to spread it all the way out. tarp out and I'm going to lay my blanket out on my tarp simply like this. And then, you know, I can wrap myself up as I just showed you and my wool blanket, or I can simply just fold my wool blanket over top of me, like this, and uh, cover myself with the rest of the tarp. And this way, you know, I probably would get wet. I mean, you really are going to get wet, but I am not going to get as wet if I just laid there in a wool blanket out in the open. This well, you know, <clears throat> keep the rain off of me for the most part and uh, keep me warm because that's an extra layer over top of me if it was a cold weather situation. Or, and, and it's going to keep me dry. And it's going to keep some of the wind <coughs> from blowing through my wool blanket and uh, chilling me to death. So this is actually, you know, this setup where you have your wool blanket inside of your tarp. This is very similar to a cowboy type setup. A cowboy bedroll. Now this is a great setup to consider even for like a modern uh, backpacker, camper, survivalist, because um, it's very effective. This layer below is keeping me warm from the cold air coming from the ground, and it's also waterproof, so I can lay this right on damp soil. And, um, I mean, this is just a really great setup. This is how the cowboys would have their bedrolls. They would have a canvas uh, lining on the outside and they have their wool blanket on the inside and they would just sleep in that. This is how their bedrolls would be. So this is how I would personally um, set up if I was out in a prairie or field. This is how I'd set up my shelter opposed to just laying out in the middle of, uh, in the, middle of the field with a wool blanket and letting the rain just downpour on you. I don't, I would not want to do that. So, you no, know, this is a good setup. You have this extra layer, which will help you because a lot of times you might not have fire. 
but we might try and burn some buffalo chips. I don't know how it's gonna work out, but I think we're gonna see. So hang with me. All right, so I went and I collected some buffalo chips. Um, these are actually not from buffalo. Obviously, uh, these are from our cows, so I think it should be pretty similar. See, there's the, I see why they call them chips, because they dry just like chip, like a chip. Uh, see that? I mean, when you break it, it's like a chip. So, I collected a little bit of that. Um, buffalo chips. A little bit of those, just to try it out. I don't know if it's going to work, if you've never done it before. Then I have some dry plant stalks, which you would probably find out in a prairie. And I have some dry grasses, which you would definitely find out in a prairie. So, uh, let me uh, see if I can start one right here. Lay down a little bit of <coughs> drier grass. I'm gonna use flint and steel. Do it the same way they used to do it. I do have some fat wood with me, but I'm gonna. I'm not going to use it because they wouldn't have it out there. So I'm going to keep myself from doing that. Alright. Here we are. I have some of these dry grasses and just get it ready. I collected some a lot of good dry grass because I want to get a pretty good flame going in order to try and burn that those chips. So I don't know how it's gonna work. I don't know how good my bird nest is. It's not stuff. Found some. Yeah. Let's try this. Just do that here. some of my plant stalks on there first, just to get it going, and I'll put on my buffalo chips. Buffalo chips are burning. See this one over here? These are burning right there. They're all burning. 